Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> G'day, it's Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, we're going to be doing a bit of Harry Potter roleplay. Uh, not really. Good joke, Stuart. Anyway, Stuart, what are we doing? Well, we're going to be doing pretty much the beginner's guide to soldering, because I know when I started building quadcopters, maybe a little bit over a year ago, I had never soldered before in my life, and it was a little bit daunting. I can remember one night, I probably spent about four hours trying to do an XT60 connector, because I had no idea what I was doing, and uh, I just wasn't finding the right videos. So what I've decided to do, I'm going to make a video just for you guys out there uh, who are new to the hobby and just really to help you with all the sort of soldering techniques that you're going to need. So we're going to talk about, we're going to be soldering the XT60, talking about the importance of pre-tinning some wires and showing those sort of things. We're going to be soldering up uh, to a PDB and also pre-tinning a PDB. We will be putting some pins inside a board and showing you how to put pins in and also desolder pins. And then speaking of desoldering, uh, we'll also be desoldering an ESC. So how to take out the wires that are in there because you have to direct solder your motors in anyway to an ESC. Anyway, so heaps of stuff, but heaps of useful techniques uh, that you're going to use all the time when you're building quadcopters. So uh, I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to plug this thing in and uh, we'll get started. Right, yeah, so let's have a bit of a look at the things we're going to be covering. So first I'm going to show you guys uh, how to strip the ends of wire and get them ready and pre-tinned up, ready for soldering. Uh, I've got a brand new ESC here that we're going to take apart and I'm going to show you how to desolder wires because that's also just as important. Uh, then we're going to be pre-tinning a PDB and that is making it very easy uh, to join some of our wires up to. Uh, and we'll also be pre-tinning a, what's this, an XT60 connector. And I'll be showing you how to the importance of all that pre-tinning and how easy it is to connect some wires up to the PDB and also how to connect your wires to your XD60. Uh, and then finally, I want to show you guys, uh, I'm going to be soldering in, look, and this is just for you guys, I'm doing this one, uh, we're going to be soldering in some pins. So uh, I'm going to be putting some pins inside here and showing you how to solder that up. Now, uh, all that I'm going to be using, it's pretty simple. So uh, I've got this stuff here. This is just some blue tack. Uh, I'm using some lead solder because I find that is uh, a lot better. And we're going to be having a bit of a damp sponge anyway, because uh, that is what you need for your soldering iron and I'm going to get a lot of questions about Stu what soldering iron do you use or what one do you recommend and to be honest uh, I use this bad boy right here it was like 20 bucks from the hardware shop uh, and it has done me fine a lot of people out there are going to say Stuart get a good one get a really good soldering iron but honestly if money's tight uh, I've built a ton of quads with one of these and I think it was like it was actually probably about $25 and that was Australian so uh, I don't worry about your soldering iron too much but definitely just crank it up all the way because I always crank this thing to max Anyway, let's get started. Right here, so the first thing we want to make sure is that our soldering tip is very clean. So with a damp sponge just here, all you have to do is wipe off any excess solder or grime or grit that you may have, and you should have a very, very nice clean tip. And before you start doing any soldering, uh, you always put on just a little bit of fresh solder to do the heat. But let's move on and uh, let's start showing you how to strip some wires and pre-tin them up. Now I've got these two bits of, uh, what is this, 16 gauge wire, maybe 14 gauge, I can't tell exactly, ah, here we go, now this bit's 14, I think this bit's 16, but basically what we are going to be doing, we're going to be stripping the ends and pre-tinning it. Now pre-tinning just means getting the ren uh, like getting the ends uh, already tinned up with a bit of solder and it makes our job so much easier when we actually have to connect them to our boards or to our other components. So uh, let's go about that, so all you have to do with your wire cutters is just sort of gently cut the rubber or the silicone around the outside outside and you don't want to be cutting the wire on the inside so you're just trying to cut that outside sort of protective coating uh, squeeze down a little bit but not too far and then just slide the end of it off so it should come right off like this so there's one and I can do that to the other one and there is two now these two are ready for pre-tinning so for my pre-tinning, look, some people use helping hands. They're like these little things with gator clips. Uh, but all I use is a bit of blue tack. It's sort of like chewing gum. You can get it from an office store. Uh, I make sure all the wires are sort of pressed together and none are flaring out the side. I get my clean soldering iron. I put a little bit of uh, solder on the end. That's going to be that's going to help to transfer the heat. And then I simply heat up the piece of wire and feed in the solder. So there is one wire pre-tinned. Now this one's a bit uh, a bit of a bigger piece of wire. This is a thicker gauge, so I'm going to hold it on there for a little bit longer uh, to really heat it up. And there we go. Now I can feed in the solder. 
But anyway, so there is my two wires. That is how easy it is to pre-tin. Notice how quick I was in all the soldering you want to get in and out as fast as you can. So next what we're going to be doing, we're going to be pre-tinning our little, say you have a little board like this. Now some people like to use the through holes and that means they poke the wire through the top and then pre-tin it all together. Personally for me, look, that is a stronger sort of bond there, but just me personally, I just like to solder it and directly stick it on like this. So that is how I do mine. So how do we pre-tin one of these boards? Well, what you need to do, you need to make sure again that you've got a clean soldering iron. Uh, if there's any sort of residue on here, you can wipe it off with a bit of alcohol or something like that. And then all we need to do is simply heat up the pad, apply our solder, and there is one pre-tinned. Two, I'll do all four. Three, and four. I do wish I had a bit of a better board to show you, but look, uh, this is all I have at the moment in terms that I want to use for these demonstrations, because I do have some others, but they're uh, ready to go in some builds. So there's our PDB that is all pre-tinned. Uh, and finally, I'm gonna show you how to pre-tin uh, one of these just here. Now this is a battery connector and I'm using an XT60, so I'll show you how easy that is. Now I remember my first XT60 was a total nightmare. I feel like it took me forever. And now because I've done so many, uh, I really wanna share this with you. So all I'm doing with a bit of blue tack, uh, you just heat it up in and out and fill the thing with as much solder as you can. So there's one, maybe a little bit more. Notice how quickly I'm getting in and out as well. You don't really sit around and hold it in for a long time because that uh, that is not good for them. Uh, and then here we go again. Here's the second one. A little bit more solder. There we go. So there is oh, that'll even a little bit more. Whoop. So there is. That is how easy it is to pre-tin an XT60. That's great, Stuart, but uh, how does that pre... That's just pre-tinning. How do I actually solder that up? And this is where the beauty of pre-tinning comes in. So uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is hooking up our wire just here to our XT60. So I'm going to push my XT60 that's already been pre-tinned. I'm going to pre take my pre-tinned piece of wire from before and watch how easy this is. Now uh, simply just sit it on there. Done. That is how easy it is. Uh, so there is a really nice, strong, secure bond, uh, nice shiny solder on there. So that is how easy it is to solder in an XT60. And that is why we pre-tin. We don't put any more solder on or anything like that. It is just so simple. Once the solder is already on there, we can just heat it up and they join very nicely together. So let's do the other side. This is with some 14 gauge wire. So this one is a little bit thicker. And sometimes if it's not sort of taking I'm, a little technique I have, I move my soldering iron back and forth just a little bit. There we go. And there is number two. So uh, that is how simple and how quick it can be to solder in an XT60. So that is definitely why we pre-tin. Now, if this was for a build, what I'd be doing, I'd be sliding some heat shrink. Oh, that's a, a little bit warm, be careful. Now, what if, yeah, what I would be doing, I would be sliding some heat shrink along here and shrinking that down, and that's gonna stop any shorts or anything like that. But because this is uh, strictly just for you guys, I'm not gonna be doing that in this uh, in this video. Next, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you why we pre tin the wires in terms of and why we pre tin the pads in terms of soldering these two together. So let's start that now. Clean soldering iron, little bit of solder on the tip and then all I'm simply doing is we'll do the, this one first. There's one, I should have done this, there we go, I have to twist this wire a little bit, should have paid attention a bit more and then two. So now, there we go, yep, that's fine. Uh, these are securely joined up, and if I actually plugged a battery in here, this board would actually be getting power. So that is why we pre-tin, because it is so easy to connect some pre-tinned wires to either like a pre-tinned XT60 or just maybe a PDB or something like that. Anyway, let's move on to another important part, and that will be a soldering to an ESC, because most builds nowadays solder directly to an ESC. So let's get started on how we'd go about that. 
Now I've got this brand new uh, DYS ESC I've had sitting around for a while and this is probably the perfect time to use it to show you guys. Uh, so the first thing you want to do, we're going to cut off this clear heat shrink that's around here because that's going to let us desolder these three motor wires because we don't actually want these on here, we want to put something else on here. So uh, all I'm going to do, I'm going to cut along here with like an exacto knife and pull, pull off the plastic and then we'll cut back. Now desoldering uh, ESC wires or any wires on a board for that matter is a very similar process to putting it to soldering on. You want to get in and out as quickly as possible. So with a clean soldering iron again, a little bit of solder on the tip, all we're going to be doing is heating up that blob of solder and then removing the wire. So let's do this. One, two, three. That is how easy it is and that is how quick it should be because that's going to prevent any damage because you don't want any heat really traveling up here into the board. You want all the heat in the solder and just pulling it off as soon as it's ready. And here's a little tip extra as well. Look, some people might not agree with this, but this is what works for me. I like to put just a small dab of fresh solder just on there. Some people would say uh, suck off the old solder and put on new stuff, but I find, I find for me just a small little dab of new solder is enough uh, to put enough little flux on there that will help. Rightio, uh, let's move on and we're going to talk about how to solder up wires to these. Say you've got a new motor that you want to connect directly to this. Rightio, so in this example I have one of the, uh, look this, this used to be an awesome motor, it still is, but this is the Racing Edition Cobra motors, but it's a bit old school now and look how long the cords used to be on here so no wonder we used to have to cut these to solder them uh, but I'm going to cut it just here because I don't want to cut too much off uh, just to show you guys uh, and what we're going to do the same process as last time we're going to strip the ends so I'm going to strip the ends of the wire off there's one two and then the last one three and then we're going to pre-tin the wires, exactly the same as we pre-tinned the thicker gauge wires before. One. Two. And three. So super, super simple. And now what we're going to do, we're going to connect those wires up to our ESC. So here's my motor wires just here, uh, and we'll connect it up. Let's see, this is how easy it is. So with the clean soldering iron, one, two, and three. Radio. So it is so easy to solder in those wires. That is about how fast you want it to happen. It should be almost instantaneous. You can feel it melt uh, and that is it. You don't want to be standing around there for a long time and pumping a heap of heat into the board. I can't stress that enough. Alrighty, so uh, we've soldered in an XT60 and we've pre-tinned some wires and we've soldered to a PDB. We've showed you how to desolder a wire just here from your ESCs and how to connect up and directly solder your motor wires. Uh, one other thing you guys might find you need to do is we're going to be soldering in some pins. So I'm going to show you that just here. Now, uh, a lot of people use these pins. Personally, I try to stay away from these, but if you want to make your system more modular, feel free to put some pins in because it lets you plug your servos in very easily and pull them out. Anyway, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be soldering these pins to this uh, this PDB I've got right here. This has nothing to do uh, with terms of how many pins there are and how many holes. This is strictly for an example. So I'm going to be desoldering these in straight after I'm done with this. But this is just to show you guys. Anyway, so let's say we want to put these pins uh, in these holes just here. All I'm going to do, slide them in to the ones that you want then we flip it over using my blue tack again that's why it is so handy and now this is ready to solder up so again with a clean soldering iron and a little bit of solder on the end now this one is a little bit different because we are going to heat it up and feed some solder in at the same time all i'm going to do is heat up the little pin or i guess the, where the pin is joining the pdb so i'm trying to heat both of them up and then apply a little bit of solder there's one two, three, and four. Right here. So that is how easy it is to put some pins in there. Now these are hard soldered in just here, uh, so that would be perfect for joining a servo connector up to if you needed to. And uh, if you're wondering, a good way to get these out now, getting desoldering these pins can be very, very tricky. So, because uh, you can really only desolder them uh, with a soldering iron one at a time. It's a little bit easier with some more expensive tools, but I'm going to show you how to get them out. So, what you need to do, you need to pull off this sort of plastic part anyway, if you're taking the pins out one at a time. 
So you've got this plastic part out and now I'll show you. Alrighty, now desoldering these pins, uh, all you have to do is you're going to heat up the same place where you put it in, hold the end of the, with a pair of pliers and heat it up and it should come out just as easy like that. It's a lot more difficult if you have to do this more than one pin at a time because it can be very difficult to heat up all the solder. Oh, there goes one of my batteries. There we go. So that's how easy it is to desolder some pins. So definitely don't be afraid about taking pins out because it can be very, very easy when you're doing them one at a time. Alrighty, and then the final thing I want to talk about is how would you join two wires together? So say, say maybe this wire is coming from your VTX and this wire is coming from your camera and you want to join them together. Uh, all you'd have to do is strip the ends like usual because we're going to be pre-teening them. But if you're joining wires, I tend to uh, strip a little bit more than usual. So I might be stripping maybe an extra two mils or something like that so we can have more, uh, there we go, that's the way around. So it can have more uh, area to bond on. I'm going to pre-tin them, so I'm going to solder them up just now with a bit of uh, pre tinning there we go and now we're going to be joining them together now good little tip if you were going to be putting on some heat shrink this is where you would slide it on because you're not going to be getting it on there once they are soldered together so if you need to put some heat shrink on make sure you do it before you solder your wires up anyway we're going to pretend we've done that uh, and now this is how we would solder them up so all I'm going to be using is my blue tack again uh, I'm going to take one wire and solder it straight next to the other. Now other people might have different techniques for sort of braiding and splicing these wires together. This is just what works for me and uh, a really easy way that you guys can sort of work it together. So there we go, we're just going to heat it up. Oop. And there it is. That is how easy it is to join two wires together. That looks like an extremely good bond. I'm going to try and pull that apart. Uh, I can't. Let me get some pliers. All right, so you can see just how well those things have been bonded together. I, well, there you go. That's how much I'm stripping that much wire with some pliers uh, before that bond would break. So that's a really simple way to make a strong bond. So there it is. There's my beginner's guide or the ultimate guide uh, to soldering for some RC quadcopters. And I really hope that helps some of you guys out there because I can know it can be kind of scary when you first start. But with some of these tips, hopefully your build's gonna be a little bit cleaner and you're gonna make less mistakes and save a lot of money. If you've got any questions, drop them down below uh, and I'll get back to you. Uh, and if, make sure you subscribe if you're new to this hobby because I'm putting out a ton of videos, like maybe 10 to 15 videos every single month for you guys. So there's heaps and heaps of new videos going up and a bunch of tips that's gonna help you guys if you're into the hobby. And if you're really crazy, uh, I do have a Patreon account as well if you guys feel like supporting this channel and helping grow even more. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. Subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying! <laughs> Just singing a song. Now while I'm here, I might as well show you. So I've got this two cell battery just here and I want to put that on my RS90. Uh, but what that has, I've put a little XT30 connector on just here. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be cutting the leads. And this is very important, a good little tip as well. Uh, we're just going to be cutting one battery wire at a time. Because if you cut both of them, uh, this metal of the pliers is actually going to uh, short it. So let's just cut one at a time. So I'm going to cut my positive first. There we go. And now we're going to strip the ends like that and we'll uh, pre-tin this up just like that and now I'm just going to put a little bit of heat shrink on that one that's going to stop some shorts so uh, I'm going to slide that over here just make sure your heat shrink is going to fit over uh, so yes that should fit nicely should fit just actually so I'm going to slide that on and then we're going to solder it straight just there. And then we're going to solder it uh, straight up to the positive side of our XC30. Now, if you're changing the battery leads, make sure that you get them around the right way because it's very important. So the positive is always the red. So we're going to solder this up right here. And very quickly, uh, it'll just be in and out. That is how, how simple it is. So that is one side of my XT30 done. 